little while back, I had a company reach out to me via email and sent me a message and said, hey, would you like to try out a pair of our uh, Brunt work boots? And I thought, well, you know, is this one of those, uh, they want to do a collaboration and all that. And he said, absolutely not. We enjoy your channel and we just wanted to send you a pair of boots and see what you thought about them. So uh, Brunt was kind enough to send me these boots for a charge. No strings attached. They didn't care if I did a video. They didn't care anything about that. They just wanted to know what I thought of the boots. And uh, Brunt is a footwear and apparel company. And they had asked me, well, pick a pair of boots and see what you think. And I ended up picking the uh, Perkins, which is a composite toe boot. Got that. And uh, first thing I noticed when I opened the box, I was pretty impressed with the packaging on it. And again, this is not a solicited uh, infomercial on these boots or anything. They sent them to me and I felt uh, obliged and, and wanted to actually recognize them for that. So uh, if you can't read that, this is not a shoe box, it's a toolbox. Pretty neat uh, slogan they got there. And uh, I haven't worn these things yet, brand new. So today we're gonna put them on, give them a test, see how they feel. I'm going to be on uh, concrete all day, so we'll see how they hold up and uh, if my feet hurt or not. So just want to say thanks to uh, the fellows at Brunt for sending these boots out, and we're going to go ahead and give them a shot today. Let's check out their uh, website. It is bruntworkwear.com. All right, we're back again today, and uh, we're going to start into some of the basic electric work that I need to do in here. We're going to be putting outlets on these posts in here and I'm going to do some things that uh, you may or may not have seen before how I put the electric boxes on the wall and uh, give an explanation of why I do it that way and also touch on some areas of electrical that some people might forget as in up here for a garage door opener and up there for a garage door opener if we elect to put one in. Now this garage was previously wired and uh, just put in the bare necessities as far as uh, an outlet to plug in a couple strip lights, light switch for those lights, uh, a couple outlets on the wall. There's one over here and one over there. And that's all that was put in. And then a couple more outlets up here for these strip lights. We're going to be eliminating them and I'm going to be running uh, regular wire up to those new lights that I put in and we're going to be putting outlets on the walls. But uh, another thing that I wanted to touch on is I want to make sure I get an outlet in between the two garage doors here. That seems to be a common area that's, that gets forgotten. There's so many times when you want to plug something in and work outside. So center of the two doors is what I found one of the better places to put them. Um, you could put them over here in the corner, but that's usually where you put tools or things like that and they end up being in the way. So I like to have one outlet in the center and uh, I guess let's get going on this project. All right, I got all the old electrical stripped out of here. There's all the wire on the floors where the outlets were here. Brought some more of this paint back down. I'm just gonna go ahead and touch those areas up where I sprayed over the wires and everything like that. And I left that center light in there. They do have a plug on the end of them. And uh, if I do uh, tend to work late, I can always plug that in for a little bit of light if I need it, but I took the other two fluorescents down. And I think I'm going to be replacing those with uh, some LEDs, maybe an eight foot strip here, an eight foot strip in the middle, and an eight foot strip on the side. That way when there's vehicles in here, you always have light shining down onto each side of the vehicle rather than having them right over top shining on the roof of a vehicle and uh, the light does you no good there. So I like to take it and put it along the wall in the center and on the far side, that way it projects light down alongside the vehicles. And then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get some outlets put on these walls, show you why I do what I do and uh, get them taken care of. All right, well, I started mounting the electric boxes on the wall, the uh, outlets. And what I've got here, so I can show you this, is they're up a little under six feet. And why I do that for a couple reasons is one, I don't have to worry about spraying it with water if I'm in here rinsing a vehicle off or anything like that. Two is it gets it up here in case I ever have a workbench, uh, toolbox, anything. So I'm a little over a normal four foot height if you were to put uh, any kind of cabinet, a bench, a shelf or whatever. 
But uh, here's something else that I do with these. Instead of mounting it flush to this and having it stick out over, and let me grab you a box real quick and show you the difference of what I'm talking about. All right, so what happens is a lot of people will mount this box like this one here, and it's got those two little raised ribs on it, and that's usually for a drywall thickness or whatever. But because we're using these in a pole building, I don't want those things to stick out beyond that ledge when they're touching on those nubs there. So I don't want them sticking out for a couple reasons. One, I don't like the way that looks. Two, because if you ever were to drop a tool, a board or anything, and it slides down the side of the wall, first thing it's gonna do is hit that outlet. Three, because it sticks out like that from the side, if I can hold on to this, and it just doesn't look very good. And another really good reason is, is when you mount it back in there, when you have an outlet plugged into that, your outlet is into the box here, your cord comes down and dangles. You're less likely to shear an outlet off if something drops or falls or smashes along the side of the wall. So the other thing is, is I, I put a spacer block in here. So when you put the cover plate on that, it holds it out away from the wall enough that you don't have to get a specialized cover plate because you can't mount these boxes flush against the wall because then you'd have to cut every cover plate down. Otherwise it would hit the pole. So when I get these all done, I'll show you what it looks like finished, but I just wanted to give you a quick idea here as why I recess them back. I have to space them out to recess them and for all the reasons I just talked about, that they're back and they're out of the way. And there you go. It's mounted up to the wall just like that. It's evenly spaced between the blocking. It's recessed back in. You can't see the other one back there sticking out. And all you'll see is the face of these as you go along. And let me show you down through here. They're recessed back. Keeps the plug safe, keeps the outlet box and the cover safe from getting hit and they don't look ugly sticking out past the beam there. All right, so let me show you an example. I put a second one up here, just lightly nailed it in. But the difference between the top and the bottom, this one here is what most people put in or how they put them in, in your standard pole building, just because it's the easiest way. They nail it up here. They have to keep it spaced out. Let me show you on this side. You have to keep it spaced out because there are notches into the boxes here where that rests on the beam in case you were to ever drywall it. But in this case, we will never drywall this garage. It just it's, It won't be insulated. And if the new owners of this building at some point in time decide that they want to, why every one of these can be moved very easily. So that's the way I do these outlets in a pole building. And you can see the difference right there. So if you would, in the comments, let me know, what would your preferred setup be on this? You just like to go with it sticking out and not really worry about it or think twice or put a little extra work in and recess that thing. What do you think is the better option? What do you think is the better look? All right, I got the uh, eight foot long T8 LED lamps mounted up, the uh, fixtures anyhow, and each lamp holds four bulbs. On a quick side note, I've been wearing these boots all day that uh, Brunt sent me. And uh, man, for a new pair of boots, they don't hurt my feet at all. There's no break in on them, nothing. And, and I've got the uh, lights all hooked up and I've got them temporarily plugged in or wired in. 
It lights up the, the side wall nicely, lights up the center area, and lights up that side wall. And like I said before, I don't ever need to see on the top of my cars, but I do need to see getting into them or on the sides of them. So that's why I do that. And now I can actually see and have light in here to finish all my other uh, outlets that I need to wire in. All right, I didn't want to bore you with all the uh, monotonous wire running, but I've got everything in. Runs all the way up there for the security light, top of the header, and everything I try to tuck back in, especially up in the rafters. You see how all these boards and everything are for storage up here. If you tuck them into the corners instead of running them on the tops of the uh, roof trusses there, you don't have to worry about wires getting pinched or anything like that. Then when it comes down through here, I've, I've tried to do my best and hide all the wires and tuck them back in. See how they come up over the tops. And I like doing that instead of nailing them to the faces because when you do that, that eliminates uh, the ability to nail shelving or screw shelving or put tools against the wall or anything. So I like to take and tuck out wire up on top and drop it down and out. So I've got all that done. Got my wires run over here to the uh, future garage door openers, one there and one there. So now it's just a matter of putting all the outlets in everywhere and the switch and should be finishing up on the wiring. All right, I just wanted to show you one of the outlets that I'm wiring up. So I got two wires coming into the box. One comes in for power supply, one goes out, daisy chains over to the next outlet. Got my pigtails on. Yes, I do wrap these in tape when I put pigtails on it, just so I can't ever reach in there and grab both terminals. I've done that before many years ago, but uh, wire nut all these together and I'm only showing you this so you know what I'm doing. Uh, again, I'm not an electrician. I just uh, refuse to pay for one when I can do these things myself. So uh, this isn't a how-to video. This is just uh, what I'm doing here with uh, the wiring I'm working on. Got uh, almost all of them done so far. Still gotta get up there to get the uh, garage door opener ones, but uh, everything seems to be going good. I'll catch you back here in a minute. There is one thing I wanted to touch on real quick in case there's any true electricians that do watch this channel. I do know that that ground lug is supposed to be up. So the whole outlet would be in that way. Some of you are gonna tell me that it's in upside down. Well, being in a garage here, being that uh, it's not commercial, I really like the looks of them better makes that uh-oh face. But uh, the reality of it is, is for you that don't know why that ground lug there is supposed to be in the upper position, let's say a small child had a knife, butter knife, and come down and touch the neutral and hot with that knife. He would then be grounded, literally, and uh, probably get shocked pretty bad. So when that ground terminal is in the top position, if they put a knife in, and let's just say I flipped you guys over, that, that knife couldn't touch both terminals at one time. It's not possible. So if you see in schools, hospitals, residential, commercial buildings, things like that, I would say that 99.9% uh, .9 of them, that ground lug is in the upper position. I didn't do it here. I didn't do it in my house. I just like the look of the outlet better that way. And they still seem to make a lot of uh, outlets or plugs on appliances and things with this in mind because it plugs in and then the cable comes down off of it. So that's why they're that way. I know it's wrong if this was uh, commercial, but uh, I just uh, like the looks of it better doing it this way. this custom gang box on the back to accommodate for the big lag bolt screws that go through and I have to put it on a an angle instead of flat. I can't stand up here in the rafters, hold the camera and use two hands to do that. So thank you Adam. <laughs> That's 
why I brought four of them. <laughs> Plugging my extension cord into the garage. <laughs> well, I think with the completion of the uh, security light up there, all the wiring projects in here are done for the time being, uh, at least till springtime. I've got it temporarily wired up right now, and that just goes off of an extension cord down over to an outlet box on the side of the house. That uh, will buy me time through the winter, and really it is only just powering these lights off of that switch. Should somebody need to plug a battery tender in, why those outlets are hot, they've got power to them, it will run off of this extension cord. But in the springtime, I need to come out through the back of the landscaping here, back around the sidewalk, in under the porch over there, and then into the basement into the uh, breaker panel and get that wired up. So that's not something that I really want to tackle right now with uh, it being a little muddier, being colder, being a little bit more messier. So I think uh, we're going to call it good on all the electrical stuff in here. And uh, I think the, the last thing that I'm going to be able to get done this winter is I need to bring some 2A crushed limestone in here and uh, get this all filled in, bring it up to grade so I don't have that five inch lip off of there. We'll fill this whole driveway in. I've got to put uh, some down there in the muddy spots. I need to dig that out right in front of the cement there to allow water to run through there a little bit better over the years. It's kind of gotten silted in along with some of the spots you see out in the driveway here. So. That'll be the last thing I think we can do on this garage project outside as far as that goes. And uh, we will get that gravel in, get the driveway touched up, get it all ready for snow this winter. And then I think we'll put some uh, stuff in here and uh, figure out some organization with the garage. Right, well, decided to stop back here this evening to see how it worked. And I think that is absolutely the perfect amount of light. Not only does it shine down all over out front here, but it reflects off the side of the house garage, lights this whole area up. And I guess the main reason for this was for this winter when it gets dark early, and also when I gotta come down and uh, shovel and plow and all that. Lights the area up nicely. So I guess let me know in the comments if uh, you're interested in seeing some more garage organization videos, whether they be here or up at uh, my house in the garage up there. And I think we're gonna end this video here. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up, hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed, that way you'll get notifications for new videos that come out. Thanks, and I'll see you again soon.